So um, Blue Square, um, we're ultimately called a field marketing agency, uh, which no one really knows what that means. Uh, but we help big companies like Samsung and a few other people sell more stuff. Um, we provide a full field force of people for any kind of uh, companies that want to promote or demonstrate their kind of products. Um, we've been going for 10 years and um, we started off literally um, on a golf course conversation with our owner, uh, with an ex-colleague of his who worked at Samsung. Um, as you can see, we've grown over the years and we just turned over 35 million. Our headcount, for the people who keep asking me, um, is just over 1,100. Well, it's just 1,000 at the moment, but we've got a campaign coming. So um, I joined Blue Square a year and a half ago. Um, I come from volume uh, recruitment and retail background, been in recruitment for about eight years now. Um, and I came over just to kind of um, change and bring on board the, the kind of model. Um, what it was like in 2017, um, our sourcing and application uh, model was that 95% of roles, including entry level, really application sort of roles, were resourced. They had one job board, um, they went through read and they cold called every candidate. Now to give you an idea, we have campaigns of anything from 100 to 200 people. So you think about the drop-off rates and the retention rates and the lack of employer brand that they had about Blue Square. Um, we also didn't have, a, well, we did have a careers page. I call it the black screen of death. It was a black background with white writing, had nine pages for a candidate to fill out. Um, and also it didn't give you a confirmation at the end to say you could submit your application or an email. Um, when I started, and as you do, you, we do these sorts of things, you test out the application process when you start a new job. I applied for one of our pr promoted positions. I've still not heard back. So, don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Application process, just to get one promoter, took seven, one recruiter 17 hours from application to offer because of the manual processes, because there wasn't an ATS. We used a HR system that had a recruitment bolt on. And as I called it, it was death by Excel. We had 11 different Excel spreadsheets to fill out before onboarding. When it was on, got to onboarding, there were another four. So 15 spreadsheets. So great if you like Excel. Um, no data, no reports. We couldn't even track how many applications there were per vacancy. So it was a bit of a mess. Um, onboarding, uh, when you started, there were a pack this thick, which for the people at the back is probably by about the size of uh, the Lord of the Rings books that you had to fill out uh, manually, then scan as a candidate and email back because the tight turnaround meant that they couldn't post them because they wouldn't, they wouldn't be there before they start. Um, selection and assessment, my favourite one. Who has difficult hiring managers? Who, who has hiring managers who think they know better than you guys, the recruitment professionals? I think everyone put their hand up there. Um, so we have, we have um, 232 hiring managers that we use with. Every single one of them asked what they wanted on an interview. So some were good. Some were asking good, competency-based interviews. Some were asking what dress and shirt size they wore. <laughs> so yeah, there was no training for the hiring managers. They just thought that I wanted to have someone, that type of person in the room. So we had real, real challenges. So what I did, I came in. I knew it wasn't great. And maybe not to that extent, but I came in and saw the team and saw the fact that none of them have had any kind of recruitment training. They were just coming through temps from other teams um, and we had a look at what we can do. So um, we literally stri like stripped everything back for every process of our 150 different roles and looked at everything from the candidate journey. Now I'm going to show you something that I've used a couple of times um, that helped me assess this. Has anyone seen the talent acquisition, talent acquisition maturity model? came from Deloitte. So um, really, really simple. Each of the sections where it's traditional developing proficient strategic is the level of what your recruitment team or talent team um, is there. And then you've got the different sections along the bottom, uh, whether it's sourcing, jobs, brand and metrics. And I use this to assess where we were on these different points on the chart. Well, Really, um, when I joined Blue Square, we were probably down at the Barbican Underground Station, which is just about 20 minutes walk down the road. Um, but there were certain things we looked at and we, we assessed of where we were. Uh, for example, we weren't even a post and pray. Um, does everyone know what post and pray is? We just put a job advert up, hope for the best, no sourcing model. Um, so basically, we were just posting job adverts on um, Read and hoping that that would come back and get some sort of traction. Um, so. Obviously, the slides will be shared. I recommend 
giving yourself a bit of a self-assessment of this. Um, we also assessed the team and we also assessed um, the hiring managers and we um, mystery shopped the candidate journey as well. So what did we do? Um, first of all, reporting is a big thing for me, understanding how many candidates we have, what your pipeline looks like, your time to fill, your time to offer. We put all those kind of measures in place. Meant initially a lot more manual Excel spreadsheets. Because we had all those spreadsheets, we had the data, so we compiled it all together. We, um, we looked at that. Vacancy process, so who here is um, vacancy process of experience where a hiring manager comes to you and goes, yeah, I need someone? That's pretty much the vacancy process we had before. Um, they had to fill a form out and they had to fill quite a few forms out. It wasn't a great experience, but a lot of the time it was, yeah, come to the, the talent acquisition team and then the talent team would have to do it as well. So um, we brought in a new vacancy process um, and a new candidate portal. With this, it was a brand new ATS, so we implemented a new ATS called Sage People at the start of last year, full end-to-end -end recruitment, HR and development system. Um, and that really kind of helped us align our kind of processes. Um, candidate management, so we actually now can action candidates and we know how we've got and how long they've been waiting at the stage. I know this sounds really simple to a lot of you guys, but we didn't have it before. Um, we have an active talent pool. So a big part of what we have in Blue Square, we have a lot of tactical campaigns. Um, so Samsung may decide they want to promote a new phone and bring in 150 to 200 people. They'll say, yeah, we want those in three weeks from application to start. Um, every time that happened, we didn't have a pool of people to go back to of good people who had left or the campaigns had finished. So now with the new system, we brought that in. Agency portal, my favorite bit because now it's the least used part of my recruitment system. When I came in, 98% of roles of our specialists and senior roles over 30K were agency filled. Now, the, I won't tell you the full agency spend, but it was six figures. Um, at the moment, we have no agency placements this year. I'm very, very happy about that. Um, but there was also a lot of battles between agencies. There was 80 on the PSL, 80. So we did a whole PSL review, and now they have to submit them through the portal. We had a lot of hiring managers, big battle for us where they wanted to use certain agencies because the agencies were taking the hiring managers out and smoothing them and getting candidates through the back door. So that was a big battle as well. Hiring manager portal, so um, up, who finds it difficult to get feedback from hiring managers and CV feedback, yeah, a few of us. So all our CV feedback now is input into a hiring manager portal, so they'll get sent the CV, they'll get a notification, they go onto the portal, they update it. Um, and the same for interview feedback. All our interviews now, the interview notes are typed straight into the system. So none of this chasing feedback, waiting agents for to come back and then you get it and you can't read it. Um, or they've written something inappropriate or whatever it is, it's all there straight away. So as soon as an interview is finished, we can go into the system and see what the scoring is and if they're successful or not. Um, and internal application portal, we didn't, uh, internal application portal, we didn't have one of them before. So ultimately, they'd have to apply on the external website through the nine page piece, even when they're internal. And if we didn't know, get notified separately, we may not know that they were a Blue Square employee. So they were getting missed and you can think about that, that kind of bad experience. To give you an idea of what these improvements have done over the last year, applications are around 25,000 now. Um, when I started, it was about 4,000 for the year, for the year in 2017. 2018 was about 25,000. A little bit of a change. Um, talent pool, we've got an active talent pool of 10,000 people. Now, someone's going to ask me, how do I keep them warm? How do I keep them active? We cleanse it every quarter and we send communications out to them. And we go back to them and the recruiters are very good at knowing when their vacancies are coming up and they go there. Our talent pool is dictated, our locations and roles by turnover rate and when we know we've got activity coming up. So we know there's always going to be a position there. So the guys are actively talent pooling and going through that kind of process. Um, time to offer. Um, dropped three days, doesn't sound like a lot. Some locations it dropped eight days. Um, and some, um, some roles. That was a real big thing for us. The fact we didn't measure it the year before was good, but in 2017, 2018, it's dropped. Um, interview schedule, so we've had 5,000 interviews. All our candidates are interviewed face-to-face, -face, or if it's over the phone, it's done through WebEx or video kind of chat. We like to see them. Has provided challenging with Skype um, finishing up and services not being very good recently. 
Um, automated and dashboards, we have 150 automated and dashboards, which means we can tell you exactly how many candidates we've got in the pipeline now uh, and where we go. And we use that data, it's not just about you having that data, to inform our decisions about our um, vacancies coming up, especially our talent pools. Um, offers made in Sage, so um, we did 1,800 offers now in Sage. Um, that basically means that it's all input in there, contracts are automated, generated, and the best thing about Sage is that they turn from a candidate to an employee in one click of a button. And retention, so this is great, we've got more vacancies filled faster, we're, we're better candidates, um, but our retention has increased, so we are, uh, people are staying in our roles for a lot longer, even in campaigns. Uh, retention used to be a huge issue. Again, this is all great, but how does it impact our kind of quality? So I've talked about process and I've talked about getting more people at the top end of the funnel. Um, quality. Quality came from us in, in a couple of different ways. Um, we had a lot of dropouts before trainings and inductions and within the first three months. So um, quality was a big focus for us, not just about getting all these people on, on here. You've probably heard it, bums on seats, feet on the street. You've heard all the kind of different kind of phrases. Um, so how did we do it? So number one, consistency. We brought in a behavioural framework for our interviewing and we trained all our hiring managers so they all have to ask consistent questions. They all understood what good looked like and it was all linked to the, the values of the business. Um, so that was the first one, sounds quite obvious. Um, really obviously around general interview kind of uh, areas and where they were interviewing, the experience for the candidate and putting that on there, that was a big thing. Um, but also we do a lot from the recruitment team, the hiring manager, understanding what the jobs they are recruiting for. So that we have day in the lives of videos, we have sessions. When there's a new product from Samsung, the team gets trained on the product. So we, uh, Samsung launched a frame, which is a TV slash piece of artwork and kind of have it on your wall and stuff like that. We brought a 55 inch telly into the office and they got trained on the product training as our guys do, so they could be fully informed. They have regular conversations with hiring managers around um, what their role's looking for, feedback on their interviews. Because we've removed that kind of time of um, waiting for feedback, it's all live and it's all active. And we have a real kind of collaborative partnership relationship. I think it's fair to say before, they were seen as administrators and didn't have that kind of respect. So now they are seen as the experts. Um, and we sense check everything. And the guys are KPI'd on, people turning up for training and retention. And they have to do retention calls as well. Who feels in here that when you work in recruitment or your talent team, you're literally on your own and you don't work with the business sometimes? CEOs, directors have their own agendas. Yeah, there's a few hands going up. So one thing that we've implemented is a performance leadership model. Um, and this is really, really important with the talent team. And it's all around development and progression within the business. Um, and we didn't have any of this before. Um, so we, this is launched this year and we've got to really kind of embed it for our internals, but it's all around uh, the employee journey and career paths, understanding of our 150 roles, what opportunities out there for our um, entry level roles to our senior level roles, and what's that next step. Um, it means we can map our talent, so they go get reviewed on their performance and their behaviors, and it means they can see where they go and they can have those open conversations around careers. Um, generally, they'll fall into four kind of categories, whether they want to move upwards or sideways, or they just want to be great at what they do, which is just as good, or if they want a short-term relationship with us. A lot of our entry-level roles we know generally will last 12 months to 18 months. So they're students, they're kind of people looking for other kind of things. It's celebrating those and looking at what development opportunities they are. And we're getting some of those. So we, it ties it all back in um, into an attract, develop, retain piece for us, which is we go focus more on who we are um, and what we've got for our externals have complete transparency over our career path when we advertise. Um, advertise our cultures and values and our behavioural framework. And then when they get in um, to our roles, TA, our talent team, will work with our HR team and our HRDs around the development of our top performers, bottom performers are, and have internal kind of talent pools through the system. All of it's going to be put in the system. Through that, there'll be a blended learning approach, credited learning, and complete clear visibility on what we're doing. We're also spending a lot of time on what we're calling the Blue Square alumni. So if there isn't an opportunity for us in the business, um, we'll keep in touch with all our leavers if they leave in the correct way. 
um, and we'll keep in touch and we'll send them communications. So if they see a role or if they see something that they want to do coming in the future, they can come back and we know who they are. And that full end-to-end -end circle has already provided um, some really kind of good value. We've just hired a HR manager uh, who used to work for us in our HR team who went off. We didn't have a HR manager position at the time um, and she went off and got the experience for 18 months and is now coming back. So we know the alumni piece is working. Um, the other kind of challenge or gauntlet that was being put down for us, and this may cause a bit of kind of um, a bit of a kind of controversial uh, feeling in the, in the room, but Samsung have realigned their contract with us, and from a recruitment perspective, expect all their roles to be filled in 42 days. Now, if I go back to the type of roles that we do, entry level roles, promoters, that's fine. They don't usually have a month's notice period. When you get into the field manager positions, you might have a month or three months notice period. So uh, 42 days, if you've got a month's notice period, it means we've got to fill a management, field management position in 12 days. So our goal this year is aligning all our processes and talent pooling to put us in the best place to do that. 